Hello everyone, my name is Peter and welcome to this video sponsored by Squarespace in which we're going to try to combine a couple of different mediums. Watercolors over here, I can't actually see with this thing on, uh, and colored pencils. Now these are both mediums I've tried before, but um, I've never combined them together. I don't know if that's for a good reason or a bad reason. Maybe they don't mesh well. Maybe they mesh great. By the way, you are 82 and a half degrees. I don't think that's good. So we've got these nice Prismacolor pencils. Bought these years ago. Some of them are shorter than others. You know, your, your favorite colors go away quicker. The, the weird, gross, boring colors last a long time. It's just kind of how that lasts I and mean, goes. And then I have these um, very nice watercolors, um, M. Graham. You can see here it says they are uh, made with honey. And these were sent to me by a longtime viewer and friend, Darvoid. You can see here these are these are what you call tube watercolors. That's how you know they're that's how you know they're the good ones. Okay. You squeeze them out of a tube into this palette thing. And there you go. You can see I've I've used these before. Uh, actually, Darvoid, who sent this to me, squeezed all of these out into here for me. The first time you squeeze them out, of course, they're going to be a little bit wet and squishy. It hardens quickly, and then you can just use like a damp watercolor brush, you know, to get like a little bit of the pigment you want, experiment with it, do what you want. And in here, actually, is a little swatch panel that uh, Darvoid made. Very useful. So it has all the names and colors, gradients. That's nice. Originally, uh, Darvoid sent me these also. They're nice watercolor brushes. Oh, they're just so soft. I have a couple of uh, just plain old uh, water brushes loaded up here with plain old water and uh, a cup of plain old water. It's not a plain old cup though. It's got some of, uh, you know, a bunch of famous awesome artists on there, but it's just water in the cup. And I don't know about you, but I need paper towels when I do watercolors. I'm gonna put the color, the swatches up here this palette over here, colored pencils over here, piece of paper. Make sure there's nothing underneath it because I'm gonna tape it down with painter's tape because as you get it really wet, it's gonna start to warp and uh, wanna, wanna bend. So a bunch of tape around the edges will help. One, two, three, four. Then we begin. I think I am going to start with some watercolor swatches. I mean, some laying down some some gentle watercolor washes. I mean, and then work in with the pencils. Go back and forth. I can take one sip of this water before I start using it, and then no more. That'll work. One sip of this water too. Okay, it's gonna be, it's gonna make for a good painting. All right, so before I got started, I had to do a little bit of cleanup because previous Peter from the past didn't uh, wipe up the little palette trays from the last time he was painting. So it became the, pro the, the, the problem of present Peter. But th this kind of stuff cleans up really easily just with a damp paper towel because it's watercolors. Uh, another thing that's quick and easy is Squarespace. You can go there and just flip through all the cool templates they have for websites, whether you're trying to get um, your portfolio for a bunch of your artwork up and running, or maybe you have a little business you're trying to get started. They have e-commerce options for maybe things you're trying to sell, whether it's physical products or maybe a service that you wanna sell. The e-commerce section makes that really simple and easy. Or whatever you're trying to do, just get started with the templates and then you can drag and drop all the different little modules. You don't have to know what you're doing. You don't have to be a programmer to get a really polished and professional website. I, I have no idea how to program HTML or anything, but it's been working good for me. So go to squarespace.com to get a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Peter Draws for 10% off your first website 
or domain. Now I will say, as soon as I got started with this, I put down a few, a few swaths of watercolor washes, and then I let them dry, of course, because I didn't want to come in with the the colored pencils while the paper was still wet, because I knew that would like really tear up the paper quickly. So, but as soon as I came in with the colored pencils, I thought, I don't know why I had any doubt about this being a good combination. In fact, as soon as I mentioned it, probably a lot of you were saying, Peter, this is obviously a great combination, and I'm sure people do this all the time with great success. And um, I think I want to try it again in the future because these really do go together well. Um, especially since, I don't know, at least for me, the maybe I'm just bad at using brushes. Okay, that's maybe... I even have some very like small precision brushes. Actually, I know f this actually is the case, I think, because I know I've seen work people have done with brushes and they can get very clean, precise lines. Um, but to me, the brushes are more of like, you know, a, a big, for brushing things on. I don't know how to explain it, but then you, I can come in with the pencils and make more controlled, precise lines but that's not all I did with the pencils because I was already I was still kind of scribbling, doing gradients with the pencils, and and then again, now that I'm thinking about it, I was already also doing lines with the brushes. There, I was doing both with both. So I don't know what I'm talking about even. More importantly, with this one, there was a hiccup at the beginning, and by hiccup, I mean that I was very unhappy with how the painting was looking. Uh, pretty much as soon as I started combining the pencils, and, I mean I know I'm acting like. It was going well, but there was a definitive point when I threw this one to the wind, metaphorically. I kept it on my paper, physically, because it was taped there. And that's probably one of the main things that kept it there instead of the trash can. Because I was like, this one is, it's over, it's done. Like I didn't, maybe I used like a pencil that was too dark, or I thought the, the colors didn't go well or something. But I thought, hey, I've already spent some time on this. It is taped to my desk. And if I do, you know, try again with a fresh piece of paper, let me at least keep messing around with this one to work out some of the kinks, see how these two things work together, maybe try some, you know, let me put down some other colors of watercolors, add some other colors of water, of colored pencils, see how they work together. And so I just kind of kept on messing around with it. And the pressure that I was push, putting on myself at that point was incredibly low because I thought I was just messing around, right? I wasn't even expecting a finished piece or you know a work of art for myself. And I feel like that's when some of the coolest things happen. Like I remember, I, have, I think I've done some of the coolest pieces that I like the most back, back in my you know, like middle school, high school days. There were these standardized test days when you had to just sit in a room for hours, do a test, and they would give you scrap pieces of paper, but you couldn't take anything out of the test room because I don't know they thought you were going to, you know, you know, take notes on what the answers were, you know, cheat or something. But they, I would finish the test early usually, and then just sit there doodling on these pieces of paper. But I had to. It was like the cruelest and most beautiful thing that you had to throw the piece of paper away as you left. But I never, ex I I knew that starting out, and I didn't ex so I didn't expect. Of myself an incredible piece of art that I could keep so just sitting there aimlessly doodling on this piece of paper and that's kind of what I was doing here and like I said I feel like that's when some of the coolest things happen that I like the most when I'm not pressuring myself to, to make an amazing thing when I when I do pressure myself then all these the, the thoughts and expectations all weigh down upon the decisions I'm making for the art and they kind of ruin it Sometimes, not always. Of course, I'm not saying it's impossible to make good art when you really want to. It's just, I don't know, sometimes beautiful things happen when you don't expect it. And I like that. It's a good feeling. And then, yeah, so then later, maybe when I was getting towards the end of it, I was like, hey, wait a second. I think this is, this is actually something cool here. I, maybe I'm not just messing around. Maybe I'm not just experimenting. This is actually like... So I'm actually inadvertently salvaging it. I'm not just experimenting with how the... I mean, I, I was experimenting, but it's like I could actually be happy with this and be proud of it. 
I actually enjoy looking at it besides just using it as a tool to see how the different colors and mediums work together. So, so give it, I'm just saying maybe, you know, give a, give a piece a chance sometimes. And I, cause I've often found that near the beginning, especially with watercolors, the it's, there's a very, very difficult point where it looks really wonky and weird and, uh, it, it, it's like it's begging to be thrown into the trash can, but you can say, no, I won't throw you in the trash can. Let me just give you a little bit more time, a little bit more TLC, a little bit more love. Let me add some more stuff to you. See what happens. Worst case scenario, you can still throw it in the trash can later. And even if you do that, you still will have learned a little bit more from that extra time you spent on it. So then, and then your next one that, that actually counts will still be better. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, so I don't regret keeping, keeping on going. I, obviously, I like how this one turned out, and it gave me lots more ideas for the next one, which I can't wait to start. I'm having fun with the color right now. So anyways, thanks for, thanks for watching, everyone. See you later. Have a good day. Take care. Goodbye. See ya. Goodbye. All right, bye. See ya.